Now, why do we need petrol? I'm talking from legal perspective, okay, petrol is coal. Now, I'll give you the factual, uh, have you ever been to district courts and seen the proceedings? What you felt? He lied. Uh, okay. So, I have that. From your you know, personal and the layman's viewpoint. Some natural calamities, fire, whatever it is. Yes, 
most probably I think they thought about natural calamity. That's why they went south down there. They could have kept in Punjab also. They didn't do that because the same reason. So they moved down to south with that backup. Uh, but I think so far, you know, we can think about it, but still yet not time for but, but you can tell me, if an earthquake comes, right, and our server is gone, destroyed, well, is, there is a backup. Right? There is not backup in the sense that we are backed up it, but the data is there in the uh, NJD secret. Right? Will we lose anything? If such incident occurs. Sir, if the backup is done in NJDZ, mm -hmm. so we won't lose the data. But I mean, NJD, our certain CIS data are going to, to some server outside. Yes. That data will be there. That will be there. That's what so can this be called a backup or not? Yes. So that's why I'm saying, we, as of now, we don't have such huge data, <coughs> which maybe have to be replicated and kept somewhere. But it is a need of the future. Everyone will be doing that in the future. But now the cloud is coming up, so I think uh, we need not worry. What, what sort of local data which we will have? If you can tell me. Purely local data. Which will, which will not go to the cloud also anyway. Will not connect it. Are there any such data which we have? Right in our now, handout? Right now, if the other things are the periphery software mm -hmm. which, which we have, all the backups are stored in the database of the iPod servers. Okay, then for that we need definitely the new server. What if you move to cloud? Is it still required? Yes. But the, you mean to say some local data will be there? Yes. Right? So yeah, that can be taken care of in the future, but you know, the ECOS project phase 3 is contemplating to move to cloud servers. If you move to cloud, then we will have backups in the cloud. They will move to cloud, definitely, there is no way out. Because the physical servers, because what would the cloud do? It would ease our management. We have small server, that's a different thing. Many of the icons or even for some of the offices, government offices have used data. They will, maybe the, our server room has how many uh, servers? I was six. Some of the institutions have old building and keeping servers. So for them it will be a big ease. Okay, then you move to cloud server, someone else will take care of it. The only thing that people are still you know, worried about is the cloud server will be somewhere else. Someone else will be managing on payment. So what about our data? Will they manage? So what if this, they suddenly one fine day tell that, you know, uh, you know, switch it to for, for a while. As technology, you know, we cannot have everything in our hands. Someone else will be doing it. So obviously, e committee is positive about going into cloud, but most of the high courts, you know, they are quite still reluctant to move there. They have not given their readiness. And as I said, uh, one of the biggest problems in this project that might come up is if the state would not fund it properly, the processes can crash. What if someone suddenly says in the district court, you know, due to lightning, our ten of our, ten of the computers are gone beyond the that, including servers, and they say they don't have fun. Then that uh, district court is locked. It's gone. Neither we can give. We don't have the hardware. Okay. Neither they can purchase because they will say they have no money. So they may have not projected in the budget. And even if they have projected, you know, only meager amount has come. So the funding from the state government is very, very essential to meet all these situations. One fine day, you know, the cloud, something like a private company based on some other countries, they might just say, oh, we are not providing service. Do what you can do. Can do. There might be legal litigations, but uh, it still doesn't matter to them. No? So that is one aspect of uh, moving to cloud, but hopefully that will not happen. It's, uh, what I am saying is just like saying, you know, one fine day, the entire market will crash and we will get nothing. Which is very unlikely. But still possibility is there. So when we we'll moving to cloud, I think that would be solved, the solved, and only the local data we may need to keep with ourselves. Role of ESA, e filing e payment, I'm not going to. There's one thing called virtual port. You know. Virtual ports are those ports you know where if, uh, the only judge and computer is there, everything goes out there. 
and they have implemented this in traffic challenge cases. So if you if you are challenged by police, and you know, if it's a compoundable offense, you can compound it. What is that? You know? What is that? It's an offense. Compoundment. Yeah. Suppose the fine is one thousand, but you just knew that. You you would obviously bargain. Why you are bargaining? The police might leave you. Okay, give five hundred and go. From where do they get that offer? To bargain. That is called compounding. Compounding means you know you can settle in law. You can settle with the fine. It's not that you have to pay one thousand. It is not mandatory. So they bargain. You know, even if you pay hundred, the police says okay, it's okay. So that is compounding. Suppose if you refuse to compound. Saying no, no, I have not done anything wrong. I have not paid. <coughs> then the police will send the, send that particular offence to court. That's so okay. You approach the court and do whatever you want. In non-compoundable, they cannot compound. They cannot charge you fine also. Just like this example, drunken driving is a non-compoundable motor vehicle offence. Then you can't pay money and escape. So if you are paying money in those days, it's going. It's not going to state check. Exchequer is going to pocket of the police. In all non-compoundable offences. Okay, they have not registered the case on the other side. So, in such cases, you know, police have no role. Legally speaking, they cannot compound, so they are bound to send it to court. Now, if in, the, uh, in such cases, you know, the system in virtual court, the system is such that it goes, that it, the, the information directly goes to the court that so and so person and so and so day has been challenged for this offence. Okay, there is no case yet. They, they, a file will come, but there is no case yet. And then the, the judge uh, will see to it through his computer and there is an automated SMS system which goes to the accused. He gets SMS. He was challenged on so and so. If you are willing to plead guilty, you can pay the fine. Because most of the traffic challenge, it is assumed, not in law, but it is generally assumed that the person has violated some kind of thing. That's why police have challenged him. Okay? So, usually in motor vehicle cases, also if people come to the court, they plead with, yes, you know, I was driving drunk, yes, I did not have registration, yes, my insurance had, insurance had failed, and they plead guilty, pay the fine and go. So, instead of coming to the court, they are given this option. You can pay the fine. Okay, once he pays the fine, certain links are there, the court receives the message, case closed. No one is coming to court. No one is required to summon the person through. Paper. Physical summons is not required. Physical files is not required. But the moment, if the person doesn't turn up, and the virtual system is having one problem, you know, if the people don't turn up, you know, it, it's shown pending in the virtual court. So, in the end, the judge will have to send it to court. If the people don't turn up, and another thing, if they say, no, no, I'll not pay, I'll contest the case, then that particular virtual court will send that matter to the court which physically tries the case. Okay, so the, in some of the, you know, big uh, districts in other parts of the country, Delhi, etc., there are a lot of traffic channel cases. One judge is there for virtual court. Right? The concept of virtual court is only this much. Not that, you know, I'm sitting here with televisions, etc., and talking to VC and all, doing case through, you know, visual mode or audio mode. This is not virtual court, in our sense, at the moment. Virtual courts, every process is computerized. So, as I said, you know, to study virtual court, study that one, we have to implement here. In China, because the reason Northeast is giving is we don't have much traffic challenge cases. But I believe if we implement virtual court, maybe we'll have traffic challenge cases coming up quite a lot. We see there in so many things. You all know what is N, what NJDG is, is. But what is its objective? To make uh, case research information readily available to the general public. Yes. Transparency. That is what, yeah, both, are, both what you said is correct. It gives you the data. Even I was in a wrong impression that, you know, if you see, we put a lot of capture in that. To enter inside. Every time we have to put 
The moment you leave particular interface and enter another one, you have to enter capture. I said, what? What is this nonsense every time? But you know, the object of that NZDC is itself that what data you want. If you want just want the data that is in the first phase, some may just require that much. So this NJDG is not for you know searching the information. It is a collated information of everything. That's why it asks you to capture every time. You are you are entering a different field whenever you are you know uh, suppose you are clicking uh, pending cases. The first phase shows pending, disposed, so and so. Now you want to know about pending cases only. Then you are entering another set of information. That is why those captures are there because you are entering a different set of information. Someone may not want to go that far. Or the interface may is happy with whatever data is getting. So it's not a place for you like CI. It's not a place like you know the eCoach website where you want a particular data. In CI's website, if you see uh, the eCoach, then there are links where you can go to directly to the particular data. But in NZDC, it's not like that. Every page you have to go through to get finer. But NJDC is not really a place where you want to take out something from. apart from what is specifically, you know, if you, if you, apart from those things which it, which it, you know, provides extraordinarily than the eCoach website. So it's a page of information. It's a website of information only. You go there rather nothing to pull much, but to see what is there. To, um, to get the final data. That's why the data in the first place is all final. The final computed data. The more you go inside, the less computations you find. You start finding individual data. So you need to go to individual data in the NZDZ. Only apps, only when you are not able to get fetch it from eCoach portal. Right? NZDZ is not really a place to face that order set. That's why it gives capture and it takes you to more final ones. Some may do that. Well, and okay. But that place is really to see the information rather than fetch the information. And sir, one more thing, the data there is, that is, we have used data, sir. Mm. In yes, order sir. to minimize the data. load also, they have put capture. Yes, yes, so, so, so that you may specific. Yeah. Time. So I might just want to go for without any purpose. You know. yes, then putting capture is quite, you know, disinteresting. Yes. That might disinterest you and say, oh, forget it, every time this page is coming. Only genuinely interested would go that deep there. CIS, you all know everything I need not tell. ECMT tools, we have equal services. Justice app, web portal itself is a equal portal is itself is an ECMT tool that is there. Some of the states have developed their own tools. We have in Hypot, Hypot also we have. What was that tool name? Which Hypot judges have used to see the cases of district courts, etc. Administrative judge, etc. Was that there? Yeah? You know me. That's what we use. These are all ECMT tools. The problem with ICJS is, you know, the charge sheets, everything has to come through e mode. That's the objective of you know ICJS. The connection between court, prison, police. But at present, that is at very basic stage. The police are not filing e charges. Charges are coming physically. Just the data is coming of that particular case, the names of the parties, police station names, so and so. So at present the court is capturing that. And uh, the, the in the ICJS the concept is you know the data entry must be at only one single point. Like if the police most of the data regarding that case will come to the court. You need not refill it twice. It automatically should fetch. And then whatever extra fields are there, which court needs to fill it, because that fields are only specially meant for courts, that can be filled. And once the court fills that data, now we are given this access to land revenue also and one more police department. They can get some access to our data. Now they need not fill it for the if they want it. So the concept is the police station would be the first place where the details of the case would be filled and that would be captured along whichever stakeholders are there. The problem is the police station, the CCTNS, the IAM. 
the pale apple cell. Why do we need fat? Because the chapters are not deep. We need to have physical fat. So, once paperless quote starts, and if you are still having this problem, then it's, it's pointless. So I don't know how this will be resolved. On the court side, everything is ready. We are willing to accept each asset. We are willing to accept all the data that are given to CCTNS. But the data that is coming from the police side is incomplete. And sometimes incorrect also. So that is the problem at present in ICJs in, our, in the entire country, not only in the city. I don't think anywhere in the country is the each asset are coming. No one has said about this. That I think even the district administrative center also has to be completely paperless and make the documents. No, their 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 parts are records are at present digitized. Yeah, okay. Otherwise, uh, that's uh, why we have given them the login. They can see how many civil cases is pending in our court. But I don't think they are whether they are using it or not. We also can see the land revenues data to the limited extent that you know whether in a particular city in a case someone builds a parcel, you want to verify it whether it's genuine or not, you can do through this software. It is available at the moment also, but I don't think anyone has used and you know, whether that is fully functional in land revenue, even in police department, they have their logins. So then, there is no need for the person to bring a photocopy also, you know, because they can just give the link and say that the exhibit is there, the sale lead, then we, go. Hmm. we have to go there and then check Online and see yeah. Yeah, yeah. Once we start, mm -hmm. if you want to really become paperless, these things have to be accepted. That's why I always say that you know, the the law is afraid of you know science. It still does not believe science. Now, obviously, because technology is 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 to such an extent that it is easy to forge a document technically than the real paper. I might sign as someone else or as MG Sherpa. Okay. I can do that here also. Isn't it? I can be more easy for me. I can just I just need to sit for about some 10 to 15 minutes, practice it. Okay. And a simple signature I can almost replicate it. We can do that. I don't know about one thing I it's more easy. Maybe this is out of context but then once when I go to IET because I go to so there they were saying that all the documents has to be saved in a blockchain mm. What is the blockchain? Because I heard that they have advised some of the ministries to save the data, the mm. blockchain must save for no one. I do still one take or no time but they were no, they, it's so easy to say, but uh, I, I, I think they will be able to explain it. But I have the basic knowledge regarding blockchain. Now, blockchain is the latest technology whose break is not there. This is so far, and everyone thinks, the science thinks, the you know, experts thinks that no one can break blockchain. Uh, in a blockchain, you know, it's, it's just like blocks. If, you, if someone is to show you in figure form, there are blocks, and each block contains data. Okay, the moment you change something, something in a data, you know the identity of the block changes, and it does not match with why well, it's called chain because of this, there's a link. This is basically I'm saying. Okay, technically it's much more. Someone can explain you technically much more better. There are blocks connected. That's why they say chain. Okay, and the two blocks must match. The moment there is a change, the blocks stop matching, and you know if the, uh, if, it, if there's a change, change in one block in the between, it will not match with either of this or either of this. The moment it happens, you will be able to know that something has been changed. So, it's not reliable at all. It changes, whatever it is. So that is what they say. Uh, it is more helpful, they said, in land revenue data because more chance of manipulation is there in the chain, you know. Uh, this is just like you know, while in the, sometimes you know, without intent also, but most of in most of the cases, intently someone might change the figure of the this the size of the land in the uh, document. So they say that if blockchain is there, you can still change it. Okay, you can manipulate it. It's not that blockchain is there; you cannot. But you will be detected 100 percent. There has been a change. Now this detection, that is why now. Why they are saying now blockchain, blockchain? And I was telling you, I will, you know, in 15 minutes, you know, uh, 
practice NG Sherpa signature and may be able to replicate it to the to such an extent that you all will not know it. Because you all will not go through it very carefully. Because I'm not in quotes only we do. Even in quotes some but we'll be able to see if you go carefully, something is wrong there. If you are habitual with the signature. If you are not habitual with the signature, then it's more difficult. So it's no easy to do here. Yeah? But we still accept this. If someone brings original, then we don't say, okay, original finished. The quote is satisfied, happy. But if the same is brought in, you know, let's say, in the screen, or even with 65B, then we start doubting that document. Because you know, detecting is more difficult. If you, techno, if you technically copy Mr. and his past signature through you know, use of tools, it will be 100% matching. Your eyes will not be able to tell you. Even the present handwriting experts will not be able to tell you that it's a paused one. There are some other techniques to know that it has been even cut from somewhere, pasted from somewhere. Now this handwriting expert can't, can't tell this. Only some other expert is required. So law is still worried about this technology because detection of genuineness is very difficult. Whereas if it's a uh, you know, Watch with a pen here, NG Sarpa. Then uh, detection is quite easy. With human hand, it's very difficult. So that is why, now even after that, you know, so what technology we need to be sure of the you know, technical documents that is being brought to us, or you know, the e versions of the things which we have in paper. This blockchain, they say, is the answer. You can detect it, detect it genuinely, 100%. But it's manipulated or not. But you can detect only this much. It can still be manipulated. Okay, and if the original which they bring itself is a false manipulated, then even blockchain will show that you know there's no change in it. If someone creates a new document which has not been created before, then even blockchain won't be able to tell it that whether it's genuine. Only when some existing data is there made through blockchain and someone changes it, then you can tell. But if you bring a solid new thing for the first time, using blockchain technology also, how would you detect it? There's no change, it's an original. But that is too far as to, you know, someone bringing a new document, creating it originally, will not usually happen. What we will rely, what documents that come to courts is, if it's a land document, it comes from revenue departments. That's why there's, you know, they're connecting it with the, these departments. Others ordinarily people people been purchased. Now once they bring it, we will see through the software that whether it is genuine document or not. But about its acceptability, the law is still silent. Whether we'll accept this process as an evidence. Just like you said, you know, we can execute it, but law does not permit. We will not do it unless the evidence act allows it. But I do not know who went to who was not. In the last uh, training at Bhopal, I think they went for this one. The director went for this new IPCC IPCC. You are saying there are changes on this. To a certain extent, I think except them, ex on the point of acceptability, they have made changes. Could be. There are some changes in this evidence act regarding electronic documents. So if you can say, anyone, anyone of you can say better on blockchain. Apart from you know, bitcoins, which are quite 
different thing. The use of this blockchain in our case, it may not be sometimes addressed particularly to a particular person also. That still can be done in this technology. Bitcoin uses that because that's their purpose. Our purpose varies. Yes. Yeah, so the Mr. X may also need to see that particular thing. Mr. Y also need to see that. And let's say for revenue documents, it's in the revenue office. Everyone will be having access to it. So the purpose and the function changes a bit, but what is said is correct. Even if you are given that key, you can't do anything. That's it. Yes. From where it is coming. So this is security. You know, and they say you cannot break this. There is no technique as of now to break this. But uh, you know, I still believe someone will break it. Quantum will break it. Quantum will break it. But I think that what you are telling quantum is quite difficult, more difficult it is, to design. It is coming up and mm. I think it's, coming, it's growing at a really Because I believe there is nothing in technology that you cannot break. Yes. If you can make something, obviously you can break it. In that session, they were advising the court should say the data is a blockchain. No, we have that in phase 3. How do you do it? In phase 3, blockchain is one of the component of project. Then AI. AI? We will say talk about AI. What is the difference between artificial intelligence and machine learning? You computer guys. Yeah, it's part of. Can you say more? It's an umbrella. Artificial intelligence is an umbrella term for everything. Like a machine can do anything that it can mimic the behavior of humans. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is the whole thing called artificial intelligence. But machine learning is just like we feed something to a machine, and then it starts learning. It starts developing uh, the abilities uh, to act like humans. And it so is that machine learning or AI? What you said just now? Uh, machine learning. It is machine learning, sir. Uh, what a machine is fed something. After that, uh, uh, on the basis of what it is fed, it starts learning, mm -hmm. and then it keeps on growing. Yeah. So it keeps on becoming intelligent. But it is a part of AI itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely correct. And what he said is absolutely correct. You know, in the earlier times, we gave uh, problem and solutions to the computer, calculator. Mm -hmm. This is the problem. This is the solution. This is how you have to take out solution. But in AI, you don't give it the solution. It itself develops solution. That is why it is called artificial intelligence. You, you feed the problem as much as you want. Technically, how it is done, God knows. But that's why it learns itself. You will not be giving you this. In certain situations, you will not program it in... It's all about programming, I guess. You will not program that in certain situations, if this happens, you do this. This happens, you That's not done in artificial intelligence. It's wide open and it's from the program which you have given, it itself starts giving you the solutions. That's why on the other aspect it's very, very dangerous if it's if it cannot be handled. And last time we had a nice discussion, you know, in the so artificial intelligence is coming in the court. Right? So far what is what it is being said is like like chat GPT which we have. Okay, it's there that uh, we'll have some kind of machine which will not have solution. Initially it will have solutions. We will start with that. that I am writing a judgment. Now I need a perfect judgment on this. Precedent. You know? It will, uh, I don't want overrule judgments. If you go to Google, you will get a lot of judgments where you have to read it and select it. This could be the correct one. But my AI will give me the latest judgment on it. It has overruled everything. Or which compass and gives you one judgment. This is it. You do it. So my job is easy. If I was taking you know, 30 minutes to look for a correct judgment, I'll get it in 5 minutes. That's how it intended to help the judges in the court. And then, just like you said, as in every program it is said you cannot break blockchain. You know, experts say this. But still there is something in my mind, everything has been broken till there in technology. Why you cannot break it? That's not the end of the thing. So, so how did that thing happen? December, I think there was some news that the website, the site, what do you call it? What is the exact term? Or Orissa, I got a banker, I got a court, suddenly the court started playing in the screen. No, no, that is, that is, what they said, tell me, I'll tell you what it is actually, they said. That's the simplest of it, it's not hack. It's 
Someone. No, no, it's not hack. They are, people use hack word commonly. Hack is not a simple thing. What someone did was, even we can simplest thing, he joined the proceedings, played the pawn through his camera. Simple as that. That was done. No one hacked it. But the news people say it's hacked. It. None of the courts. Supreme Court's website was once, you know, what do you call that? Fishing website was put there. So it was as a different thing. Okay, so that's still not happening. That somebody from some African country had <laughs> So this is what it is. I, I do not know really, but I saw that video also, okay? Sorry. And then it's you can easily say someone has opened their camera, logged in inside the courtroom, yes. and played it out there. Okay, the, maybe the person was so neat. He did, maybe if he was a little bit clever, I think I do not know what happened after that. He would have changed his name and etc. And you know, log, log, you can come through you. You can give any name, when you can give any name. Because if email is there, that's a different aspect. Or the person is really a fool, he came with his own name, thought he can be detected because his face can't be seen. There are still people who believe in this. If my face is not seen, I will not be known. In this, but you can still be known. Because you can make out from that video only it's being played on a screen. So I don't think it was hacked. Why would an African person be so interested to play a pawn in one of the judges? Uh, these are all uh, mischief. There's no purpose. He's going to get nothing. And mischief, mischievous are going on. Even if it is hacked, what you want, what you say, someone doing mischief on me. Let's try this. Why would a person knowing so much of computer would not like to have mischief with the knowledge which he has, which he has? And in fact, it is said that it's the teenagers who are more experts and they have not gone to computer classes. They have learned it through YouTube, whatever it is, all these hacking processes. Self-learned hackers are not able So in this AI, you know, the, that uh, last discussion, you know, I, I asked them whether you know, it can replace judges. AI. What did you say? Everyone says today it cannot replace a judge. I think it can. What's your reason? What, what we have now cannot uh, replace judges. Yeah, yeah. Later on, uh, the system will become so evolved mm -hmm. that it can, it will have a brain of its own. Let's ask to judge. Only. I don't think it can replace. Why? Because it, what is fed in the computer, it will write judgment as for that. But That's then, what we are saying, it's yeah, not that. But then what I feel is in the court when a judge decides a judgment, it is not only the law, but you have to see everything. There has to be some human touch. Ah, human touch. This is what I was waiting yeah. for, this word. <laughs> now, what is this human touch? Tell me. Have you ever written a judgment with a human touch? No, not with a human touch, but then obviously, like in CPC, it says that CPC is the handmaiden of justice. So then if you go technically with what CPC is saying, the provision says this, that and that. Then, then what would you do? There is never going to be... You are still justice. doing according to law only. You are not doing it as a human, are you? You have, you, do you, will you leave the provision of law? No, I will not leave the provision right. of law, but the law also says that... But the computer can do it. It has been very provision. provision. Yeah, but there is something called principle of natural justice, fair play... Principle of natural justice, or do you have some part of it? Even if the... One of, one of it. Yes, even in a criminal case... Computer will have no problem. Even in the criminal cases, I think you need to say that... You, they say that you have to see the demeanor of the... Uh, accused and the witness and all that which a computer can never never do it. I will ne I don't think that computer will say that the, oh this convicts no, was such with the present I don't time. think uh, there are still technology which detects, okay? It can detect and his detect your was this to the to this particular question, this is how he answered. So that computer can never so far I would say that No no we don't let's not see the computer as what we have in front of us. To my understanding, it can replace because that 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 is the I told you about AI. You know, you don't give it the solution; it itself gets the solution. So, it's possible. I believe it's possible to replace a judge also, not required. It's just not being fed data. So it is being fed thing, problems. Another thing which I heard about to generate that. solutions by itself, similar to what humans would do. In fact, better than what better solutions than what humans can give. But one of the judges gave me a very good answer. What that just particular had a reason that you know it can't replace. What about then there will be no appellate court? Is it required? No. Because if AI 
has its own level, right? You, you want to have different kinds of level. If you are implementing a particular AI as a judge, then that is final. It will not decide differently. It will decide differently in such a short span of time. So why to have an appellate court? It will say the same thing what you said. But still, I still keep this question open. Then why to have appellate court? Not required if that is the best solution. Um, it will save time. Chat GPT can write judgment according to the particular judge. Okay, Islamic children could. Chat GPT is still not a uh, great AI. It's, it's not. It's more, you know, paired with data and it's getting. But the more people are using it, the more it will learn. But the data is also dangerous. Like my friend was saying mm -hmm. that when you use Chat GPT also, you have to be very, like, mm -hmm. you know, give a big type of a question and all. Like for example, write a letter for me regarding this. Mm. Then you don't feed everything exactly what it is because it is at the end uh, personal data. Because then later on, example, the number personal data something in public domain. No, it does not uh, process personal things. I asked ChatGPT many personal things. It says it cannot do it. Okay. But ChatGPT is based on the data that has been fed so far. But it's still learned. It's learning. Once you try new thing, it will give you answers. I did it. I in, I looked for you know translation of a particular language which was not there in the chat GPT. It is saying it cannot do it. But after three or four months, it was giving translation in that particular language. So it learned somewhere you know because chat GPT is not just there. Are lots of people behind it looking into it. What we are typing there. So one fine day. I am asking it about emotions every time. It's still not answering. One day it will answer. To a great extent. And you know, the legal, they have quite good legal data. The way they are giving answers. The legal data is quite good. Because if you remember, Chat GPT became more famous with the legal people rather than anyone else. Every time you heard news about Chat GPT, was some judge doing something on it. Yes, we can still rely. We have to go through it. What it is saying. It gives disclaimer. I have used it. Mm. Because, <laughs> because it is learning. That's why learning is also dangerous. No? It might have learned incorrectly. And it is giving you as if that is the correct version of it. This is a, a still a problem with AI. We know that it is learning, but whether it's learning, learning correctly or incorrectly, that's the problem. And we were told that, you know, there in the website also in some of the countries now you can order a food according to just like this biscuit I, I may be liking this biscuit very much every day I like you purchase the biscuit which you like or food right you like its taste can you develop certain things where you know it's exactly according to how you want it I may be taking this biscuit because I like it but I still would prefer to be of some kind of taste now, there are companies which deliver you food according to the exact taste that you would like. Then you will be working in the computer. What do you like? Smell. What kind of smell? So it will combine it and you know give you a very new recipe which is to your tongue. Your tongue will like it. Because it's your feedback based on which they are preparing the food. So in future they say it will not be like you know I have no choice. Like if I want to eat burger, I may get choice of companies that are selling it. But burger is a burger. I may want a little bit more spicy. Now what we do? We have to telephone and say a little bit more spicy. But you know, what does that little bit mean? To human it is impossible. But this AI is what you are meaning by little bit. You can design your little bit in sitting in the computer and all other food. This much I want. This is it. And it will give lots of parameters. Okay? So your little spicy will really be little spicy to your test. So this is how AI has gone to an extent and one of the things that I imagine myself that would be required is that airports. Now what is the problem we are going to airports? First of all, from here to you have to reach in time and even after reaching in time there is a queue etc 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 and in big airports like Delhi etc. One of the biggest fear is it might change and you might get locked, you know. You may lose body. 
because you did not know the gate chain, neither you heard the, uh, the announcement. Couldn't there be a technology? Because see, uh, we waste how, many time, how much time in the airport? We reached two hours before. And then we almost have four hours at the airport doing nothing. They're having coffee, listening to someone. But I've seen people walking there. People walking on flight also. That's the only time they are getting to work. Now would these people like to, you know, sit at a particular gate which has been defined walking there with a worry in mind that the gate might change when will be the boarding announced. So they were saying that there could be a technology one find. You need not worry of all these things. Just go and sit anywhere you want to sit in the airport once you are security checked in. Do your work with ease, with no worry of your flight leaving you. As the boarding time comes, you yourself reach there. Sometimes I so these are the AIs that they are thinking about. Sometimes I think this AI is also very scary. It can, like for example, mobile phone can hear things which we talk also. I feel like that. Because yeah. You know why? Cool. Don't tell technical. What could be the possible reason that mobile phone suddenly gives you what you are, you know, said just now? Yeah, like for example, what could be the reason? This winter, we were around in the afternoon of 2 30, and when we were just casually talking, there was one topic which came up saying that South Koreans hate Indians and all. Mm. And I was like, oh, South Koreans hate yes, Indians. This is a normal casual talk around 2 30. And then I went home, and later around 6. And I'm just checking the YouTube. They said, Mulego Mata, they were suddenly first beating us up. You know, you know why? You know why? I was like, shocked. You know why? You know why? Just, just phone guess. Phone, I was not even playing with the phone. My phone was inside the bag. Just guess why? I don't know. It's, 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 it's absolutely, absolutely true. Yes? Maybe the mobile is here. Why? Yeah, mobile is here. So it's very scary. Why, man? Yes. That person, I do not know which app, it could be YouTube app or any other app. But in it's YouTube, not that, you know, in it's YouTube. not that YouTube also works in solitary. So many people give them data. That's why they say data sales and data money. Who is selling data? Who is better? YouTube is not working. Well. There are so many, even your you know, dominoes may be selling your phone number, etc. to particular people. Yes. Okay. And they are working day and night on this to know you. So your yeah, YouTube, if you have, if you, if you have to use the app or it could be any other app. Then your micro, it has an access to your microphone. It's recording everything. But when that conversation, the data, when the conversation took place, so why downloading? I was not even using the well, you cannot help not downloading Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, but while downloading other apps, you must be careful. You know, you should see what access it has to. You know, once uh, I don't know the e company or someone had made certain app, and the letter came from my court. I was in this saying that, I think you was also there, yes, you know, saying that, please download this app. The moment I talked, tried to Justice. download, Justice. it was taking all your information, access to everything. Oh, that so straight away wrote in the group, this has access to so many things, we cannot download it, it's very dangerous. It was a government something. Justice app, no, not justice. No, no, justice doesn't happen, it's something else. We did not download that, even get on I could. Registrar General said, Okay, hold it for long. It was document, camera, yeah. and that particular app did not actually, the purpose of that app was something else, which did not require accesses to that. Okay, so it has, it has access to a camera, so that's why, you know, so many these clothes, you know, changing clothes, etc. has been, without person knowing it, even not having touched the phone, it has been viral, it had access to a camera. And through some, you know, some small apps, those apps which whose purpose is just to take these things from the person. Because so many people download it, especially in Facebook, Instagram, there are external links usually given. People, you know, without knowing it, click it, that it will tell you how much, how good a person you are. Have you seen that? Similar kind. What's the point? That's something computer can tell you how good you are. And people, you know, think it's, take it seriously. It really tells about you. And the more a person is depressed, the more a person will get into these traps. You know, there are certain loan apps. These loan apps are giving you 6,000 to 10,000, interest of 55 percent. The person is just concerned about money. He'll get 50,000, 1 lakh from that app, 
Nothing required. You will send your Aadhaar card. Something. They got the money, right? Once they get the money, you have to download app for those rules. It has access to all your photographs, everything. And what they are doing is, now the person doesn't. He was happy when he got fifty thousand. They are giving small amounts, okay? And now it's time to return. Interest is fifty fifty five percent. Person will never be able to pay. Me. And they are sending WhatsApp or SMS to that person threatening. I'll make your new videos. I'll make your if it's a girl, even if it's a boy, and send it to so many contacts of yours. How that fellow is getting the contacts? The access to the contacts. But recently, one of my friend called me up and said that a known friend that I'm in this problem. What should I do? I said, just nothing. You cannot do anything. I think you can do a file. Your data is already taken, and, and if that fellow has preserved it. You can still use it. The only thing now you can do is you know, remove the app and then lose an app. You did not lose an app, but you you uh, remove the app because if that fellow has not preserved it, then his access is gone. Threatened with a new, you know, it can be easily seen that if that fellow has you know, morphed the picture and he took the WhatsApp DP picture. That particular person, and that threatening me that, and you know they are so clever. They were, they were, they picked up such contacts where this particular person would not want them to know about all these things. And I talk quite a lot with me. So how did I mean, you know we discuss? How did that person is only targeting one person, saying that he will send his news to that particular person. And that was the simplest one. He he was threatening, saying that he will send more complex ones. Then that person was in some office senior, okay, and then whose number the fellow was threatening to send. Then he said, "I, I never had, I have had you know long talks on the phone with this senior. I have never had you know any WhatsApp chat of long ones with him. But how did this person is knowing that I fear him? It was his boss. Then you know we thought a lot, and I told him any SMS you have." Send to this. We have we have chatted with them. Then there was one SMS regarding their office problem, and this fellow read that SMS and thought this is the only fellow with whom if I threaten, this fellow is going to pay up the pay back the money. So, see, it meant he had access to SMS also, and SMS is the common access nowadays. Every app says it, it will have access to your SMS. We use SMS less nowadays and. No, I think once I had a quarrel at Domino's Delivery. You know, it always asks phone number. So I used to give my wife's phone number. It was working. Then one day I gave my wife's phone number, and then while delivery, the fellow was asking me OTP. I said, Why do you need OTP? No, no, no. That's the process. For delivery, it is required at the counter itself. Okay, and then I said. No, I, then that phone is not with me. I gave my wife's number. She is somewhere else. Hmm. And still the person is not even ask. No, I won't ask. Why should I? You did you tell me while asking the phone number that is required for OTP? There no answer to that. So, but this is the process. In the end, they gave me no OTP was required. Why do we? Why do these people take phone this one? Not only this. Even when like, you are doing billing, they are asking your phone number. And the more once you give, <laughs> you are. You know, WhatsApp was flooded with not only from that particular Domino's or whatever, from everywhere it starts coming. Email also same thing. I have unsubscribed so many things, but still it comes. So this data, yeah, pushing you to do something. So that was I mean, you know, it has access to your micro, hundred percent, and YouTube would probably actively use uses of microphone because that's what they want. You have given the permission. I was like shocked. I was like, "What is it?" Yeah, last time one, <laughs> last time one judge was telling you, know, he was singing that song, and then when you opened the phone, that song came. <laughs> it could be a pure for coincidence also, but yes, these things have access to microphone, and they are hearing us every time. What we are talking about. Uh, I think. Like there are pictures uh, like the green dot and the yellow dot in mm -hmm. iOS as well as in iOS as well as Android. 
to the like, the user that uh, the system you know, the app any app is using your microphone mm -hmm. or your uh, camera camera yeah. green dot but then i think this thing is just uh, made to fool us because uh, normally when we use it is shown but then when like we don't use the phone and this thing is not shown as well uh, our recordings are taken our clips are taken uh, voice clips are taken so i think ios and android also actively encourage this or do this yeah, it could be. why because you know if you don't enable most of the features some apps you can download it but you know not giving certain access will not enable your certain features for that and there goes are primary features of the app so you are bound to give that access but the less access you give the less useful that particular app becomes the first thing in the phone you know no. in this one also in other phone also uh, i have security and i have tightened it even there are some you know, uh, features which even the iphone has so many what is the why we use iphone actually we are, i am not using iphone actually i am just talking on you know, someone is saying it's an iphone it has so many features different than android you literally can do so many things with this mobile phone but i'm afraid to give all those accesses just it can it needs certain accesses it has so many features you know, just we are using this phone costly phone of 1.14 that just to talk actually the younger generation if they really know is such a tool for them that's the difference between iphone and android we are satisfied with the ease of processor that it provides to use that's all. and one thing i don't like about this iphone you know what the face id if you know is it such a creep i would say you know uh, suppose sometimes i genuinely put it before my face still it does not recognize And sometimes when it does, don't want it to be recognized. Just like when my child is playing my phone, I sit at a distance, okay. And if the child turns that phone towards me, it recognizes me, and it gets open. So when I am really needing it to open, it's not opening. And when I am giving it to someone else, or you know, last time what happened was I forgot my uh, code. Now that particular code, you know, Kotak Mahindra Bank has still has six digits of ATM pin. And I remember that ATM pin through my this uh, this number code. Yes, number. If it does not recognize the face ID, it gives you the number code. Right? I know the pattern of that number code, and that is my ATM pin. I went to ATM. I forgot the pin because now I need to see these numbers every time I am, you know. I, I was avoiding it, doing like this, and you know, trying to take out the number because first it will give face ID. It is not opening. is asking for face id again and again now she is how intelligent this device now sometimes if now my intent i was purposely trying to take out the number code rather than the face id because if i show face id it opens i will not get my number code i need to see that passcode that the front face face of it so that you know, this was my pattern this is my pin code when i was purposely trying to get that number code instead of Or it, because if it does not recognize you twice or thrice to guess ID, it will say in the passcode. It is not doing that. But when unintentionally, you know. But sometimes unintentionally, when even I put it before my face, still does not does not recognize and it takes me to passcode. So the device device is also very intelligent that how whether you are purposely. intending to take out the passport rather than face ID it knows that to that so it's not just iphone just like that if you try if you try to do something purposely intentionally in this one it doesn't work so as i gave you example i sit far away from the child not that far i could be near him so that he doesn't fall and he somewhat plays and turns it around and you know tries to pull this up it gets unlocked is detecting my face from that distance also When I really want it, it does not detect, and it takes me to passcode. It it understands all our gestures. It is understanding that the you know it is with child, no age. So I was surprised with that feature of this iPhone. How it does? Because if you see, it has some motion which we are not using. Some motion sensors are there, using which you can do so many things in this world, but we are doing it manually. 
In Google, that's one, of the, uh, one example is given that Google tracks your everything. Obviously, if you keep it open, it will track everything. But if you keep it off, it, will not, it cannot track. And nowadays, all apps ask tracking permission. All apps ask. That's the new thing that has come in apps. Don't allow it. Why do you do tracking? Just to don't allow it, it will still work fine. As a security and privacy in the digital area. How much you may be able to say on this? How to ensure data security? What will happen to me? As I never got the name of key. What is that key? What is that? And the organization for data that we can secure with the system. But somewhere we will have to keep data. What do we have to do? Open it. And what about RTI? RTI says we should give information. Proactively. <coughs> so if a system we are, which, we are, which we are building is very giving links, and we don't want to publish things on the website and say, this is there, do that. We are giving links. You go directly there. Fetch it for yourself. Right, everything is like that. So how would RTI act in the future? Will we, we, we still be just like online RTI? What, what do we have? Do we give them access to data directly? No. We see that application, what data they are asking, they are giving it. But this is a very rudimentary process, basic process. If we are to, you know, if, if we consider the today's e growth, even the e project which we are talking about then a day will come when people want access directly to what can be given. Ultimately, we are giving it, right? We are giving it, but the person, unless it's barred under the act itself. So why do we have to print it, publish it, and do it? Okay. They should have direct access to what they want to do. That's the future of RTI. There is no point in saying we are giving data, but we have to apply for it. Then we will see whether you get it or not. Then we'll print ourselves, upload and give it to you. We can avoid this printing ourselves process if we are actually giving the data. Verification we can keep with us and ask the person to directly go to the data and see for yourself. So, how would this balanced with data security? I don't know. We cannot in future tell that we print and give RTI information to you. We are doing that as of now because we are files, physical files. Once we are out with physical files, then will you still print or give the person the access directly to that data? You see for yourself. It should not be this cumbersome process of making online application and then there must be a mechanism where once I have identified and the institution decides that information should be given, I should have access to that file directly. But that brings in a uh, danger of someone manipulating it. So, a balancing act must be there. Anticipating and addressing societal concerns about AI and judicial, what it could be? Societal concerns about AI in judicial. First of all, as they, they may still want to see a judge sitting on the human being. That could be one of the, but that's the concern as of now. What does that give? Some kind of you know, comfort or trust? Can we trust machines sitting up there, we as a humans going and you know? Those are the concerns. I think that is what they want. Well, ATM is a machine, we are trusting it to give me money. Aren't we? No, but in judiciary, like I said, you have to, the judge sitting will not only look at the law only. Hope we don't have to wear the dresses like robots. But the judge will also have to look at the entire thing, no? Uh, like, like I said. No, no. The okay. This, that. But writing judgments is. then will not be like writing judgments now. We're sitting with our laptops and you know, from starting from beginning. We will be having 80% of our structure ready. So that 20% of which you are talking about, even if you are talking about human touch, whatever it is, it's just that 20% left, it would be left for us. So that AI... That can AI still be developed to minimize to 1%. Yes. So a judge of today and a judge of that future, 2050, let's say, may look totally different. 
No need to think much. It will be so easy. No? But what we think is easy with technology, I don't know what hardships will come with it. So my point is, whatever it is with the judiciary, we can be you know, particularly with judiciary, how will we address the, let's say we are kept a machine, and then people, you yourself going there for a justice, will you trust that machine? It's as good as human. Can we do that? Is that possible? Will that come? The societal concerns as of now is because they have not seen things. So. Do you worry flying in an aeroplane? We know it can crash. But we, you know, that's the most easiest and fastest mode. We see, in fact, we eat there. We eat. <laughs> Unless there's a turbulence. <laughs> so we are trusting it. No? A trusting machine. But still it's driven by pilot. But they say now it is only landing and take off is by pilot. That can also be autopiloted. And the rest of the journey is autopiloted. It's just that they don't let us see what's going on there. So don't know, I can't keep closed doors. Yes, obviously humans would want humans there. And just imagine governing the entire governance. You, you get you know, science fiction movies of this sort. All robots govern. Actually they are not, they are machines. But made by humans. So that could be the only societal concern, otherwise AI would bring huge potential of you know, easing, doing business, doing things. I don't know, they say this traffic light is AI based. How? But what is it? How is it done? I don't think it's AI, but... Is it AI? It's AI, but I think it is automated. No, no. Taking into consideration the traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not exactly AI to my understanding. God, they say that they have cameras. They have camera action. It's everywhere in the entire country. And that camera is with us also, no? that's wrong one. Yes. I think this is all related to card to X communication. The infrastructure communicates with the with other infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So the previous traffic light can say how many cars have passed through that. No, that, that, that can happen. But why they are still not implementing? I think that will make it much more better. So let's see how the future unfolds, but yes, to my understanding, whatever I learned about AI, it can do anything. Anything, it will reduce, uh, you know, the requirement of humans in so many places. And you can see some of these things, you know. I forgot one example, but it, I found something really surprising. The remember no one from there, I tell you. It was regarding the plus. In our country, I think it was in Bangalore airport or somewhere. Plus, or you know, having was or something. It was totally different from what I had seen till then. What was it exactly I thought? Maybe inside it's using something. It, it, it's related to use of that water or something, I forgot. So, that, you have been to Bangalore, right? That airport is really different. I had not seen airport in there. Outside also. But I'm not really not sure whether I saw that. I saw something which was very different. I forgot. If I remember, I'll tell you one day what I saw. It was something that technology was so good. It related to washroom, but what was it? It's not coming to my mind. So anything else we can close?